I'm Leslie Glazer with App Properties. Welcome to Windy City Wednesdays. Today I'm going to be talking to Brian Dombrowski with Guaranteed Rate, and we're going to be talking about financing. So tell me, what's anything new in the market? Plenty new. I mean, underwriting guidelines are always changing on a regular basis, but uh, for the most part, I think um, you know, financing, lending standards are pretty much the same and they've been loosening up over the last few years and we've seen a couple of restrictions so some tightening um, as of late but overall pretty much everything's still easy money okay. right now easy okay. money uh, easy money and I get a lot of questions from my first-time buyers you know when can I when can I uh, buy a place how much do I have to put down is it five percent ten percent you know do you have any insight there any any help i i do absolutely so um you know i i get these questions all the time from people sure uh, i've been in the business for almost 20 years and when i started uh, minimum down payments were 10 percent, and buyers had to have five percent of their own funds in order to qualify for a conventional loan okay. uh, things have changed drastically since then i mean this day and age we still have options for 100 percent financing and if the buyer doesn't qualify for 100% financing, then we just go straight towards a 3% down option, and that's a standard conventional loan, 3% down. And if the buyer doesn't have 3% of their own funds, guess what? They can get that money gifted by a family member. And if they don't have a family member that can gift the 3%, they can actually get the money through a down payment assistance program through a nonprofit, such as the Illinois Housing Department, that will grant the money. So when is it comes this about to, credit rating or what, how does one qualify depending you know, on which program? I, it all comes down to each individual person and the different programs available to them. So some of them are income driven, some of them are credit score driven. Um, and you know, sometimes people would say, I want a down payment assistance program, but they've got enough funds of their own in order to put down. And in that situation, it's probably not going to benefit them. So. Really, like each person is like a snowflake. There, there's no two people that are like, no two snowflakes that are like. And I gotta say is that, you know, as we have a deeper and deeper conversation with each individual customer, then we start peeling back the layers and of the onion and determining what programs would probably fit them best, and then I can guide them down the right path from there. And being with guaranteed rate, you have lots of different options. We have so many different investors to choose from. Not only do we have the, the different investor pool to help us with regards to competing interest rates and getting the lowest rate, but we also have a lot of different investors so that we can pick from all their different loan options. Not just the normal standard Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and FHA loan programs, but programs that are out there that are not available to most other lenders, specifically not available to most of the banks out there. So there are options. I know you can think out of the box because I've had some people that are just, you know, whether they're not working now, um, you know, going through a divorce. I mean, there's so many situations where you've been able to help people out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's fun. It's nice to be a part of, a, of an organization that has these kind of opportunities where I used to say when I worked for a big bank, it used to be like, if it fits in that box, yes. you get a loan. If it doesn't fit in that box, you don't get a loan. So <laughs> it's really nice to have a lot of different boxes to choose from in order to push people in the right direction and make sure that we have something for them. Yeah, I've had some clients that you run their credit and they didn't even know that they have issues or someone took their credit, you know, so you help them with that. You Absolutely. Them walk them through the process of maybe getting that off there. Absolutely. Report. So that's where I think it's always <laughs> better to have a conversation with a, a loan officer, have a conversation with me sooner than later, because you might be perfect. You might have everything all set to go. Maybe you just need confirmation that you're good, stay on the right path, keep doing what you're doing because you're doing it right. Yes. Maybe maybe you do have a blemish. Maybe you do have a parking ticket or something that showed up on your credit report that you just had no clue was there. Well, it's better that we know about it now so we have a, an opportunity to correct it before you found the right property. At least this way we'll put you on the right path to get the best mortgage at the best terms and make sure that you're not in a bad situation where you're spending money that you can't qualify on a property down the road because you hesitated on having that conversation with your trusted and mortgage And are you professional. getting uh, many clients that are saying, hmm, I'm deciding between renting and buying and which one makes more sense? I, I do get those questions. Um, 
a lot of there's a lot of pent up buyer demand right now. So I feel like there's a lot of buyers that that want to buy a property. Uh, they just don't really know where to start. And I think you know, obviously, talking to your real estate professional is uh, is the is the best place to start. But also having a conversation with your mortgage professional is uh, is is always typically where you really want to begin, so that you know where where you stand and you know what price points what your affordability is you're thinking about all the different expenses that are associated with this and making sure that we're tailoring this pro the the loan program to match your uh, your your budget and lastly what would you recommend to your clients that um, have their loan and they have or I should say they've applied for their loan to closing during that time, okay. what should they be doing? Should they be out buying a car for their, <laughs> for their new place? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Every loan officer who's been doing this for as long as I have has always run into this where um, there's always one person who goes out and co-signs on a car loan with a family member or friend. And it's like, it's really awesome that you did that for them. But I hope you can live in that car because you're <laughs> not a, you're not able to qualify for the mortgage now. Um, Why is that? It's because we have to count all debt obligations against you. And if you think, well, you already ran my credit, you're not gonna find out. We will find out. We have a third party monitor that's going to be monitoring your credit reports. And if, if you're not working with us, there's another other companies that are gonna do soft credit pulls in order to make sure you have an established new debt. So keep your job. Keep your job. Don't buy furniture yet. Don't, <laughs> don't buy your furniture yet. Um, don't spend all of your liquid assets because you're gonna need some for, for closing. Um, don't close credit cards. Don't open credit cards. Don't co-sign on loans. Don't, um, stay. you know, just stay. And if you are gonna change jobs, have a conversation with me or your mortgage professional before you do it because let's face it, most of the time we're gonna be okay as long as you're changing jobs and staying in the same field and your compensation's gonna be the same. But if you're going from a 100% salary job and you're gonna take a job where it's now 50% salary and 50% commission, guess what, I can't use, we can't use any of that commission income for qualifying. So though your income is most likely gonna be higher, we can't give you credit for it. So let's have those conversations uh, right off the be bat. And if you are going to make, if you have to make any big purchases, your car died and you need a car, all right, let's have that conversation because maybe it won't impact you, but maybe it will. And I need to ask, I'll ask you that question, is it more important that you have that car or that you have a place to live? And I hope the answer is that you have a place to live. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I so Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was me. fun talking to you. I appreciate it.